uh, Hi all. We will uh, tell about this interesting competition understanding clouds from satellite images. Um, uh, the main uh, goal of this competition is to help uh, to understand climate better because we can uh, use um, uh, clouds formation uh, structures to, uh, to uh, make better climate model. Uh, and Max Planck uh, Institute using this uh, uh, data and the result of this competition in their uh, models to uh, improve uh, accuracy and to make to predict uh, uh, weather changes uh, better. Uh, so, uh, the main goal is to build a segmentation model which will recognize the different cloud types. You can see the four main uh, uh, cloud types and they name it uh, sugar, flour, fish and gravel. Uh, they are changing a little. You can see it, that uh, it has a different structure um, uh, and uh, it's not so uh, easy for for a human to detect it. Of course, it, it, it will take some time, but uh, it's easier to uh, uh, to train some algorithm which will predict uh, results uh, uh, without any uh, trouble. And the main competition metric is the dice coefficient, which calculate uh, uh, how much how much um, place we predict uh, right from from everything we're predicting. And I uh, would like to present my uh, team. It's uh, Andrzej Duhovny, is uh, our uh, guest and uh, great friend from uh, Belarus. He will talk uh, later after, the, after me. Also, uh, Ilya Dabrinin, Alexander Polikov, uh, Dmitry Bogachev, and me. Uh, our final standing is uh, uh, 21st place in public and 37th place in uh, private. So it's... Uh, uh, little shake up in the end of the competition because uh, because of the uh, a little different uh, data in private um, and because uh, other problem and uh, some team have this problem some other have uh, a little uh, less but everyone was influenced by uh, by some uh, shake up in the end of the competition uh, so uh, uh, d data for chain there was only uh, 5,000 uh, um, images. It's not so big for ML competition. In some competition, you need to download uh, hundreds of uh, gigabytes of data. And for this competition, it's only 5K images. It's not so much. Uh, so we, we cannot make uh, some bigger, uh, bigger validation structure as we just split on validation, on test, on dev test. We can just use uh, simple cross-validation techniques with few folds, or to just uh, train test split, and that's all. And for test, we have 3K images, so there was no problem with inference on the on this stage. Um, so, the data was very interesting because um, these uh, uh, the clouds types intersect with each other, uh, as you can see in the slide, and also uh, um, organizers market uh, not so good because. As you can see, it's just uh, some uh, some squares, uh, but uh, it it it, you know, it only takes it also takes some uh, area around it, which is not actually clouds. But as you can see, they just make the square, and that's all. Of course, it's not so good for uh, machine learning algorithm because it's uh, it's it's hard for him to understand uh, how to make borders. And a lot of uh, people trying some di some different uh, techniques how to uh, how to uh, how to fix the situation. So we make some first steps. It was uh, standard steps for for all segmentation uh, uh, competitions. We trained some models. It's like ResNet, uh, EfficientNet, and others. We use five false uh, cross validations. Also, we uh, used uh, different augmentations um, uh, to, uh, to decrease the variance in train and test. Uh, also, we used new optimizer, Redom. It proposed to have the, big, uh, the better, uh, the better you know, convergence, but actually we didn't, uh, we didn't see it because it shows the same result as an ordinary uh, atom. And as a metric, as a, uh, as a loss function, there was binary cross entropy uh, plus uh, dice loss with a proportion that's like 
zero five zero nine and uh, zero one. Um, after after we uh, predicted some uh, masks for for free for four types of clouds, we after that used uh, post processing. For this, we understand that each image has at least one mask because there is no images without clouds. Uh, and if our models uh, uh, doesn't predict every, anything, we can just apply some mask to them. For example, with, with biggest uh, probability. Uh, and after all, we use uh, cleaning. It, uh, uh, when we get some masks on the uh, clouds, we can see that some clouds are very small. So we can just delete them from the uh, from our final solution to increase our score because uh, metrics like dice score it penalize for false uh, positive and we can just delete them and to be sure that we um, leave only right uh, masks for for final submit it gave us some um, some uh, result some improvements uh, but it was not so good we got a very unstable a result because uh, from model to model uh, our cross validation score doesn't uh, correlate with uh, uh, public score and it was very hard to understand also we use such techniques as convex hull when we use a different uh, uh, approximation of borders uh, it also fails we use different augmentations and we Mm. Propose different uh, techniques for empty images, but it fails because um, our models was um, not so good. It was only segmentation models, uh, and after that we uh, proposed new techniques and we used more uh, sophisticated models. And uh, the next speaker will tell more about our uh, final solution. Welcome, Andrei. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrei, and I'll introduce you our final solution. Uh, so we used well-known architectures such as UNET and FPN. Uh, UNET was with ResNet 34 uh, encoder and FPN with efficient net uh, B5 encoder. Uh, so uh, we learned uh, using three phases. First phase, uh, we trained using B uh, binary cross-entropy plus dice loss, uh, we, need, uh, we uh, need only from 20 to 30 epochs uh, for every model uh, to model become uh, converged because, uh, because of data set uh, properties. After that, we uh, have second phase learning. Uh, we tuned our best checkpoint from previous uh, phase using Lavash loss. And the second phase was uh, using SVA, stochastic weights averaging. Um, in addition, we used a uh, very co common technique uh, for segmentations, uh, competitions as test time augmentations. And of course, we used post processing for segmentations tasks. And in other slides, I will explain you why post processing was the evil thing for us. Uh, of course, we used augmentations. It's not possible to participate in Kaggle competitions and not use augmentations, and of course, augmentation library. And uh, in this slide, we, we, you can see that adding some extra Mojada augmentations can give you additional increase of your score, uh, both on uh, public leaderboard and private leaderboard. Uh, and it also gains us in lo local cross-validation. Uh, one interesting fact is that in our uh, final version, there is uh, stressed augmentation random rotate 90, and uh, the thing is that this augmentation was added here unintentionally because after all these uh, augmentations we perform resizing, this is why uh, this augmentation didn't break our pipeline, but if you see only list of augmentations, you could think that it should break it. But it didn't decrease the score, that is why we uh, leave it. 
Uh, okay, SVA. Uh, this is was our last phase of training, and the logic and disease is the following: uh, we perform tuning with very low learning rate, with causing annealing, uh, annealing learning rate scheduling using Lavash loss, and after that, we perform averaging of model based checkpoints, and this gives us some boost. Uh, and interesting fact is that you only need, you, you can perform uh, from 10 to 20 epoch, epochs, but the thing is that you can use only five epochs and use uh, SVA only one time, and it's already give you some considerable boost. Uh, and of course, ensembling, uh, when you uh, when you join this competition, uh, forum was full of messages that uh, Data is rather noisy, and ensembling is the key uh, in this competition. And in fact, it is true. And you can see that using uh, only two models, uh, it gives you uh, it increases your score bigger in both stages in cross validation in public and private leaderboard. And also, you can see here that test time augmentations give us boost on local validation on public leaderboard, but didn't give anything on private leaderboard. Um, and here is our description of our final submit. Uh, we used uh, averaging of models uh, f for from two phases, from second phase after Lavas tuning and from second phase after SVA tuning. And it makes our uh, submission more stable. And now the evil thing, uh, of course, we used these, these two uh, post-processing, mask binarization and mask zeroing. Uh, in our final submit, we didn't use any convex hull uh, optimizations because it did not perform well. Uh, and the problem is in mask vanishing. Uh, because for me, it was very unintuitive when I uh, was becoming familiar with segmentation tasks that we use complex uh, neural networks and still we have to use such strange, very easy to understand uh, things such as uh, mask vanishing because of some threshold, hard-coded threshold. And still we use it in this competition because, because it gives us the most boost uh, in all phases, in, cross, uh, in local cross-validation and in public leaderboard. Uh, we also tried classifiers multi-label classifiers, but they were not so successful. Uh, and why we tagged Ilya in this slide? Because uh, if we analyzed our, all our submits after the competition ends, and we saw that uh, last Ilya submissions before our merge, they didn't have any gap between private and public leaderboard. And it was great if we use his uh, a scheme of validation, we could achieve some better place because it could give us possibility to calibrate our solution better. But the thing is that when he tried uh, mask zeroing with such high threshold of 20k, his uh, his results become better than using his uh, multi-label classifiers and binary segmentation models on top of this. This is why even he didn't believe in this scheme. And now about our tools. Uh, it's like uh, Kagler Gentleman Kit, PyTorch, Albumentations, Segmentation Models, and Catalyst. Also, uh, me personally used this U-Form Depot Docker uh, images. They are very useful in order to control your experiments. And this is our uh, achievable, uh, achievable video cards to training. Uh, and uh, last findings, I just want to repeat from all other speakers from any ML training trainings that make your pipeline configurable. It's very important. Uh, don't use thresholding so much. For us, it was a crucial uh, thing which give us uh, lower positions than we expected. And it's also from my uh, experience, if you if you use some trick that uh, from that used uh, top teams from last competitions and it gives him uh, some boost, just try to find some bug because I did it several times here. 
and uh, we also analyzed uh, um, solutions of top places from us and uh, up to the first place. And the thing is that we didn't find anything that differs from our solution even up to second place. And only first and second place have something interesting that could be stressed additionally. So that's it. Thank you for your attention. You can ask questions. Thank you for this presentation. Any questions? Well, uh, one question for me. How long did it take to train, did it take to train all of your models? Uh, Okay, uh, for first phase, uh, it's training, for example, for 30 uh, epochs, for five folds, it took about 20 hours. So to train the whole pipeline, we need about three, four days. So, okay. Um, uh, do you ha have only RGB images or uh, something else? Yes, just RGB. Uh, uh, where is uh, the source of the data? From uh, Kaggle only, or uh, you download it somewhere? Yes, only provided data set, no additional sources. Only RGB? RGB. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. 